So let's talk about Zibug conspiracy, as in the conspiracy to make you eat Zibugs. Yeah. Conspiracy. The, the conspiracy that's also reality in yeah. most of Europe now, in that the yeah. EU has passed lots of laws that make yeah. eating bugs legal. Yeah. Um, it seems to be one of the core aspects of the Great Reset is, well, cows are destroying the environment. I mean, we've had cows for literally tens of thousands of years, but now they're destroying the environment all of a sudden. So you're but, not allowed to eat steak, you have to eat boogs. They also talk about how animal populations have shrunk massively, and surely the number of dom like domesticated cows is at least mitigating some of that shift in the drop-in population of wild animals, isn't it? Like in North America, for example, there aren't that many bison around as there yeah, used to be. It's true, it's true. Lots of cows, though. Yep. Aren't they just fulfilling the same role? No, apparently cow farts are destroying the earth, and so therefore <laughs> you have to eat zaboogs. Uh, now, before we go on, if you want to support us and want to learn more about this, because I'm going to be giving a very brief overview in this video, uh, go over to lowseas.com, sign up for a five a month, help us keep the lights on, because of course we've been demonetized, thanks YouTube. Um, and check out the work that we've been doing on the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset. Uh, there's one link in the description, but you can find loads on there, because this is just all out in the open. They're just so totally open that this is what they want. You will own nothing and you'll be happy eating your boog burger. Just it's not it's not a conspiracy, which is why it was really funny when uh, US state affili affiliated media, NPR, tweeted this out. A conspiracy theory alleges that a shadowy global elite is conspiring to control the world's population by forcing them to eat bugs. It's being cited by politicians in several countries. We need the uh the John Tron thing of yeah. just pulling up the TV. They just started saying it on TV. In front of cameras. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. They just started saying it. So it's a shadowy global elite. Well, I mean, we can name them. They are a shadowy global elite, but we can literally name the people involved. Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, mm. anyone who goes to the World Economic Forum. Like, literally just list those people. They are the people. Yeah. It, a conspiracy theory holds a lot more weight when you can name <laughs> everyone involved Point and to them saying it, you it, and then you point to the results yeah. of them saying it. Yeah. Just like, look at what Europe's just passed, or the yeah. EU's just passed. Sorry, yeah, they're, they're pushing for eating bugs. They're literally saying it. They're literally implementing it, and now bugs are literally we on have, the menu. We have objective evidence of yeah. every part of the the chain of what's going on here. Yeah. So let's let's go into the article, right? They're complaining. In mid March, a far right Dutch member of Parliament named Thierry Bourdet tweeted, we will not eat the bugs, accompanied by a photo of himself holding a microphone in one hand and pouring golden mealworms out of a bag on the other. Well, good, based, great. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he wins. Hopefully he becomes the pr president of the Netherlands. Great. Like, this is a good advertisement for him, to be honest. Like, if, <laughs> if I were a politician, I'd want my strong statements like that to be printed by the media mm -hmm. as well. It's also worth mentioning as well that mealworms are now um, legally in the EU mm -hmm. regarded as human food, even yeah. though my knowledge of mealworms is that I've used them as fishing bait to catch fish that I can actually eat. Yeah, and that's the, 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 what you, the reason that you say have been made legal is because prior to this, it was not legal to feed Because people they bugs. weren't seen as fit for human consumption. No. Earlier in the month, Poland's ruling nationalist party, Law and Justice, well, that sounds great, falsely alleged that the opposition civic platform was trying to push citizens into eating worms, prompting the opposition to hit back <laughs> with a similar accusation, going, no, it's not worms, it's bugs. Bugs and worms are two different things, actually. The Law and Justice party in Poland are great. Yeah, I know. Uh, those are just some of the several instances of the European right-wing politicians lobbying a conspiracy theory that elites want people to eat bugs. But they're... They're saying it and, it's and happening. doing it. Yeah. yeah. The accusations arrived shortly after the European Union approved mealworms and crickets as food ingredients. Oh, there it is, yeah. What? what? Oh, yeah. It's so crackpot. The, the elites want you to eat bugs. That's why they're literally making it like <laughs> they're changing it from being illegal to legal to feed you these things. It's like, yeah, it's just conspiracy theory, even, you crackpot. Even the way it's presented there, the yeah. accusations arrived shortly after they <laughs> did the thing. Yeah, exactly. Why? What? I mean, just NPR, you must be joking. I oh. think anyone takes this seriously, right? This is a terrible smear attempt, I must admit. It's really bad, isn't it, right? Across the Atlantic, American right-wing pundits and influencers decry a similar plot. The ruling class really, really wants us to eat the bugs. Conservative commentator Michael Knowles said in a YouTube video, waving a printout of a Bloomberg opinion piece titled, Why Bugs Must Be a Bigger Part of the Human Food Chain. <laughs> it's literally owned by Michael Bloomberg. 
a billionaire, a New York billionaire. And it's literally an opinion piece saying we need to get the plebs to eat the bugs. And Michael Knowles is just like, wow, the elites, which Bloomberg is very representative of the elites, really want you to eat the bugs. And they're just like, well, I mean, that was just crazy conspiracy theory. Well, nonsense. The story he referred to actually focused on insects' potential as high-nutrient animal feed on, and on insects' ability to process human waste rather as food for human consumption. Oh, did it? Did it? Is that, that the only thing, is it? But that's not what people are taking exception about, is no. it? It's that people are taking exception to humans having to eat the bugs rather than them being but, lower down on the food chain, being the food that our food eats. And it's like it, like in the EU, it's not like, but it's it's like, okay, let's just introduce bugs into the food chain. Eventually, you'll have bugs on your plate because you know that's what they're doing. They say it, right? In recent years, this aversion has fused with an amorphous and shape-shifting conspiracy theory in which a shadowy global elite conspires to control the world's population. Oh my God, as if they haven't talked about population reduction enough. I mean, it's literally all Bill Gates goes on about. If we vaccinate enough people, we'll reduce the population because fewer people will die and therefore fewer people have children, which is the way he intends it. Although people do seem to take that out of context. Um, not that I'm saying Bill Gates isn't a bad guy or anything. He obviously is. But in the charitable interpretation of what he's saying, is that he's saying when you increase people's quality of life, then they have fewer children and that reduces the world's population, which appears to be true, actually. That is that true, That is a yeah. true thing. Um, but the point is, it's not like a shadowy conspiracy. It's what he's actually doing. It's what he spends his billions doing. For those who espouse the theory, eating bugs isn't just a matter of disgust or questioning the impacts of climate change. Well, where did climate change come into this? Uh, well, that's it, the justification exa for it, Exactly, it? exactly. It's framed as a matter of individual freedom and governmental control. That's because they literally are saying, you're going to stop eating meat because meat is harming the environment and therefore it is the government controlling you, forcing you to eat bugs in lieu of eating meat. And we see them promoting this everywhere. I mean, the WEF literally have a website and everything that says all of this. The scientists say it's urgent to cut climate pollution from agriculture, mainly by reducing meat consumption and eating more plant-based food. That's the next line. That's the next line in your own bloody article. <laughs> like, it's a, fra it's framed as a matter of individual freedom and government control, but the government's going to stop you from eating meat. It's in your... It's almost like this is being written by a right winger with a gun to their head. Yeah. <laughs> Just they're slipping in yeah, 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 yeah. the points that we're making in the first place. It's also worth mentioning as well that bugs need to eat human um, standard yeah. um, animal feed. Like, so the grains and things that bugs eat yeah. has to be up to a human standard, whereas yeah. some other animals like uh, chickens and cows yeah. don't necessarily have to eat a human standard, but then you can eat the, the cows or chickens. Yeah. So how they, that can be justified as being eco-friendly when they're going to have an impact on crops in the yeah. first place. They're yeah. going to be consuming the same crops that we might be consuming yeah. rather than perhaps lower quality ones, which we can then eat. And also it's worth mentioning as well that um, crickets, mealworms, that sort of thing, their, their actual um, protein count relative to how much food we have to give them is about the same as a chicken. I've so also, you can just eat a chicken, and it would be sa exactly the same for the environment, but much tastier and probably less dangerous for you because mm. bugs also, you, you consume the whole bug, which contains its digestive system. So if they have parasites in them, in their digestive you system, you can get yeah. ill, whereas with a chicken, you consume parts, you don't eat the digestive system. Uh, as I understand it, there are different qualities of protein as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so animal proteins, particularly high quality, has lots of extra nutrients in it that don't exist in bugs. So this is a way of depriving you of those. I mean, there's a reason mm -hmm. like Jordan Peterson can literally eat beef for just forever <laughs> and not die, right? Because it's got all of these yeah. other things in it. Whereas that probably doesn't exist in bugs. I'm, like, I'm not an expert, but that's what I've read, you know, just going around the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, fact check me on that. Right, but anyway, right? The next line, after they're like, yeah, so scientists are saying we've got to get rid of these these meat-eating meat yeah. and instead eat bugs. And they're like, yeah, using insects as a source of protein is an idea that's floated on the edges of policy debate. So the government's like, yeah, so we're going to have to start eating bugs. And the EU, as you said, literally just made it so people now can eat bugs. And it's like, why are you saying this is a conspiracy theory? It's literally in your own article. This is happening. I mean, it, <coughs> it's even worse than it might seem in the EU because mm. the bugs are being ground down and hidden in food. Yeah. 
So you might not even know you're eating bugs unless you read all of the ingredients. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. There's there's some sort of cricket um, potato chips now, um, where it's literally you've got to check the ingredients. They say crickets, uh, but it looks like um, crisps. They've also come up with euphemistic um, names for them as well. It's a bit like how you know American drug companies come yeah. up with like a branded name. Yeah, they've done that yeah, for yeah. crickets and mealworms. Yeah. Even though the idea is far from taking off, it captured the public's imagination in the US in the early 2010s when the the press covered United Nations reports about edible insects initially as a way to improve food security. Well, A, I mean, I, I, I doubt that actually captured the public's imagination. Uh, but how is this disproving the conspiracy theory? It's not in any way. <laughs> it's really like, not, is it? This conspiracy theory, anyway, here's all the evidence for it. Yeah, yeah that's, literally, <laughs> that's literally what they're doing. <laughs> Take the phrase, I will not leave. So they complain, they, they start complaining, that, oh, well, I mean, this, this I won't eat zaboogs came from 4chan and therefore it's bad. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm not going to eat the bugs, regardless of what 4chan's opinion on it is. And if 4chan are like, we don't want to eat the bugs, well, then they're right on this issue, aren't they? Right? Take the phrase, I will not eat the bugs for an example. Uh, some of the earliest instances of this phrase surfaced on the 4chan message board in 2019. Anonymous users repeated the phrase in a photo in response to a photo of climate activist Greta Thunberg, sometimes paired with the phrase, I will not live in the pod. Yeah? I'm not going to live in a pod. I'm not going to eat zaboos. Now what? That's not exactly a controversial yeah, thing to say exactly. to most people, is it? I don't want to live in a tiny yeah. little pod or eat bugs. Well, one anti-defamation league researcher was like, well, yeah, but this did come from 4chan. It's like, oh, no. So? It's not going to make me eat the bug burger. The phrase, I'll not eat the bugs, would later resurface as part of COVID-era conspiracy theory about government coercion. Ah, yeah, there was famously no government coercion during the COVID era. <laughs> Just, are they mad? Yeah, uh, they are actually mad. Imagine how left-wing you have to... how Just full of left-wing propaganda you have to be to think that this isn't obviously just what's happening. Just the government coercing you into your home and not allowing you to leave, that's democracy in action, right? Oh, there. yeah, that's, that's it's just, just pure democracy, right? It's difficult to pin down when it began. As COVID-19 swept across the world in early 2020 and governments imposed mandates on masks and upheld restrictions on social, social gatherings and travel, the conspiracy theory that global elites were seizing an opportunity or even inventing an excuse <coughs> to insert more control over an unknown population flourished. But Klaus Schwab wrote a book called COVID-19, The Great Reset. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he literally wrote He wrote a book. whole book about it. What are you on about? They literally locked us up in our homes. <sighs> they literally did. This is gaslighting on an astronomical scale, isn't it? Unbelievable that the US state-affiliated media, NPR, would say this. Do you know what's disappointing this? The BBC doesn't have a state-affiliated media tag. Is it of all things, the BBC. I mean, come on. But anyway, so where where would the crazy public get the idea that the elites want them to eat zaboogs? Where would they get that from? Well, we turn to NPR in 2011, <laughs> where they say insect cuisine is all the buzz. Don't you, don't you know that the UN just put out, as you remember, they said in 2010 or 2011, the UN put out and it captured the public's imagination. I don't know anyone who's said, you know what I've had recently? I ate some crickets. Amazing. Boots. You should try them. It was beautiful. Yeah. No one said that. No. No, but this is NPR. And uh, then we go to 2013, NPR. Insects may be the taste of the next generation. A report says a UN food and agriculture organization says insects, they're good for improving the world's secur food security. So, well, that's good for them. I'm not eating zibugs. And then we go to 2015, NPR. Bugs, not what's for dinner until they're tastier, maybe. So we're trying, we've trying. we spent the last four years trying to get them to eat the boogs, and they're just not doing it because they don't look very tasty. So we need to figure out how to make them more delicious. And uh, in 2019, they were like, you know what? Maybe we should stop trying to tell them that it'll save the environment to eat the boogs because people don't care about the envir environment enough to eat the boogs. There's no one bother. <laughs> No, I'd rather boil to death than eat well, bugs. Humans have an innate disgust sensitivity towards insects. Yes. And it's eating them. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> there's a good reason in that they can make us yeah. ill. Yeah. You look at a carry thick oh, look at it. It's so cute and delicious. <laughs> but a bug, it's gross. I'm not mm -hmm. crawling on me. The cuter the animal, the more I want to eat it. That's exactly. the, the rule. So then it was like, look, okay, we need to make this progressive. 
right? The, the general American public obviously aren't going to, but that 8% of the public who are insane progressives, we need to cater to them. And so look at this one here, foodie, foodie, foodie. Edible insects are on the menu. Get your progressive fashionable boogs. Come on. <laughs> it's now you're saving the world. You're ahead. You're on the cutting edge of human culture. You are progressive. You are f- cool. You're I think the, the only people gullible enough for them to fool here would be if they targeted like TikTokers and Instagrammers, just like, oh, if yes. you do this, you'll capitalize on this new trend. Yes, exactly. And then you'll that's, have all of these weirdos. Well, that's what they were trying to do there. But uh, by December 2019, they realized that this wasn't working. And they literally said, well, look, people just don't want to eat the boogs. Companies <laughs> face an uphill battle trying to get Americans to eat bugs. But look, <laughs> these are all NPR. These are all from NPR's website. Where are, the, where are people getting the idea that they're trying to make us eat the bugs, says NPR? No, it's conspiracy theory, but also, here are all our articles <laughs> trying to make you eat the boogs. Honestly, what a... It's just such an embarrassment at this point to li- to see these things. But uh, yeah, don't, don't eat the boogs. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the symposium series, this episode on sophists and sophistry, if you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotusitas underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.